Welcome to section 16 of Psychiatric Pharmacology. In this section, we'll be discussing atypical antipsychotics, also known as second-generation antipsychotics. This diagram illustrates the mechanism of antipsychotics. To help orient you, we can see the brain with two dopaminergic pathways highlighted. The mesocortical pathway, outlined in blue, goes from the midbrain to the frontal cortex. And the mesolimbic pathway, outlined in green, goes from the midbrain, again, to the limbic system and the nucleus accumbens. Many psychotic symptoms are related to problems with these pathways. And to help illustrate why these pathways are important, we've actually magnified a synapse, which you can see up here. This box on the right shows first and second generation or atypical antipsychotics. Both first generation and second generation antipsychotics can be used to block dopamine 2 receptors, as shown here. But just know that one of these second generation or atypical drugs, aripiprazole, is actually a partial agonist not an antagonist. Now on the left of this magnified synapse box, we see second generation or atypical antipsychotics again. And this is to demonstrate how these atypical drugs also inhibit the 5-HT2 or serotonin 2 receptors. Lastly, there are other receptors that are inhibited by antipsychotics, which are demonstrated over here. For example, histamine 1 receptors, muscarinic receptors, and alpha receptors, most importantly alpha 1. The effect of blocking these hormone receptors create lots of side effects and these side effects are more often attributed to the first-generation antipsychotics. And with that background, let's dive into the story. This story takes place at a cabin in the snowy woods. Having seen too many scary movies about cabins in woods, the owners of this property decided to put a sign on an atypically shaped tree that says, No Psychos, in an effort to keep themselves from being chopped up by Jason Voorhees. Well, this No Psychos hanging from the atypically shaped tree will be our symbol for atypical antipsychotics. There's a particularly hardy variety of centipede that inhabits these cold woods, and one of the nightmarish creatures can be seen climbing up the atypical pine tree right now, while well, centipede and pine together kind of sounds like a centipede. So this centipede climbing up the pine tree will be our symbol for the drug a centipede. It is tradition that each time the family comes up to their winter cabin, they hang an article of clothing on a clothesline that runs between the two sections of the atypical pine tree, which is why that clothesline is set up in the middle of winter. Well, this clothesline and pine together sound like clozapine. So this should help you remember that clozapine is another second generation or atypical antipsychotic. Olaf the snowman can be seen at the base of one of the pine trees looking up in fear at that terrifying centipede. And this isn't the same Olaf from the Frozen movies, because that would be illegal. In fact, we don't even spell it the same way. Well, this Olaf-like character standing at the base of the pine tree will be our symbol for olanzapine. And this Olaf-like character was about to let out a scream but his fellow human comrade popped out from behind the pine tree and quickly whispered for him to be quiet so as not to scare the centipede away. Well, somebody yelling quiet next to a pine tree sounds like quetiapine. So this will be our symbol for quetiapine. Right near the No Psychos pine tree, there's a pair of snow domes, or igloos. Well, this pair of snow domes should help you remember that many antipsychotic drugs end with the suffix peridone. So pair of domes, peridone. For example, iloperidone, paliperidone, so if you can remember the peridone suffix, you can safely remember the names of the other second-generation antipsychotics. There's another pair of domes nearby with a banner running between the doorways that says respect. The people to whom these snow domes belong really want people to respect their space and not come in without being invited. Well, this pair of domes with respect banner between them will be our symbol for risperidone. Respect pair of domes, risperidone. And the reason we want you to remember this particular peridone drug instead of just remembering its suffix, is because it has some unique side effects and will help you memorize those, which will be in this location. But before we dive into those side effects, let's talk about the mechanism of these atypical antipsychotics. Toward the back of the scene, there's a hammock where a couple of kids are sharing a tune through a set of earbuds. Let's zoom up. Look at them share those tunes. Right next to them, there's a kid in handcuffs because he was caught smoking dope. And notice that this kid still has two joints in his mouth. So I guess they chained him up for smoking dope, but didn't take the dope away. So let's break down this idea. Recall that two people sharing a tune is our recurring symbol for serotonin. And the fact that they're on a hammock, which are suspended at two points, one on each end, should help you think of serotonin 2 receptors. And the kid with the two rolls of dope will be our symbol for D2 receptors. And the fact that the two roll dope kid is handcuffed represents dopamine 2 receptor blockers. And you can remember serotonin 2 receptors being blocked by remembering this giant snow monster coming to eat these kids up, preventing them from listening to any more tunes. I guess they were listening to it too loud, and it woke up the snow monster. 
So this idea should help you remember the mechanism for most of the drugs in this class, which, although is not totally understood, we understand that they are serotonin-2 receptor blockers and dopamine-2 receptor blockers. One of the kids in the hammock was drinking hot chocolate, but they were understandably startled when that snow monster came bursting through the trees behind them, so she dropped her mug and that plate, causing both to break. Well, all of this commotion caught the attention of a nearby snake that is now slithering around the corner and angrily hissing. Okay, so let's break this down. Notice that the mug and plate have little handles that look a lot like alpha symbols. The cup has one alpha handle, and the plate has two alpha handles. These have been our recurring symbols for alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors, and the fact that they're broken should make you think of antagonism of alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors. And the single hissing snake represents histamine-1, and this kid that just kicked the snake away on accident represents histamine-1 antagonism. So tying this all together, you should remember that atypical antipsychotics can antagonize histamine-1, alpha-1, and alpha-2 receptors. A couple was out taking a stroll through the snow when they decided to stop for a quick break. The charming gentleman pulls out his Air of Pine Saw air freshener to impress his lady friend. She really loves Pine Saw. Well, Air of Pine Saw sounds like Aripiprazole. So this air freshener will be our symbol for the drug Aripiprazole. And if you look at his mouth, he's also smoking two dopes. I guess they just have a weird culture around here where if you're going to smoke a dope, you got to smoke two at a time. So that again represents dopamine 2 receptors. And notice that he's partially rubbing his girlfriend's shoulder. Just one shoulder, not both. So this should make you think of partial dopamine 2 agonism. And this is why aripiprazole is unique. Instead of straight up antagonizing dopamine 2 receptors like the rest of the atypical antipsychotics, it actually acts as a partial dopamine 2 agonist. Now that we've reviewed the mechanism of these drugs, let's dive into the adverse effects. Near the pair of domes with the respect banner, a guy can be seen very respectfully offering his girlfriend a tampon, which she kindly refuses. This girl didn't have any pockets, so... Her boyfriend offered to carry her feminine hygiene products while they were out for a walk, but she ended up not needing them. Refusing a tampon like this is our recurring symbol for amenorrhea, because it's clear that she doesn't need it right now, so she's not having menses. So this interaction here in front of the respect domes should help you remember that risperidone specifically can cause oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. A guy who has had his eye on the girl who is refusing the tampon decided that it's finally time to make his move. So he was headed over to her with an ice cream cone, one in each hand, to ask her on a date. But he tripped on one of the respect domes, causing both ice cream cones to land right on his chest. These ice cream cones on his chest resemble breasts, and therefore represent gynecomastia. And we like to use ice cream getting on someone's chest like this to represent galactorrhea. So this idea should help you remember that risperidone can cause gynecomastia and galactorrhea. Later, we'll talk about adverse effects that apply to all of the atypical antipsychotics, which will be over here. Before we do, let's actually talk about the clinical uses of atypical antipsychotics. There's a banquet table outside where a waiter can be seen arranging the place settings. The waiter has done this hundreds of times, but he's extremely obsessively particular. So he's using a chart to make sure that everything is exactly right. This obsessively neurotic waiter should help you think of obsessive compulsive disorder to help remind you that atypical antipsychotics can be used to treat obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. Now a statue of two polar bears is the centerpiece on this banquet table. Let's zoom in. Notice that one of the two polar bears looks sad and depressed, while the other looks happy and upbeat. Well, these two polar bears on opposite ends of the emotional spectrum, happy and sad, should help you remember that atypical antipsychotics can be used for bipolar disorder. The head server is inspecting the table and taking notes of what is good and what needs work. Notice that his note sheet has a plus and minus symbol at the top to divide his notes into positives and negatives. Well, this server's note with the positives and negatives written out should help you remember that atypical antipsychotics can be used to treat positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Now let's introduce this girl. She's gotten super pregnant and was walking by the no psychos pine tree when she saw that huge centipede and reached out to touch it. I also want you to know that her pregnancy craving has been olive oil. So she was carrying a bottle around with her that she's been slowly drinking from. So when she reached to touch the centipede on the pine tree, a bunch of oil spilled out. This pine tree, again, is the symbol for the pine suffix of many atypical antipsychotics, such as acenapine, represented by the centipede, clozapine, represented by the clothesline, quetiapine, the guy saying quiet, and olanzapine, which is the snowman. Recall that lots of oil like this is our symbol for hyperlipidemia, and this girl, who's gained so much weight due to her pregnancy cravings, represents weight gain. And also, notice those dyed beads on her fancy coat. Those dyed beads represent diabetes. So tying this all together, 
the girl who gained lots of weight, spilled her hyperlipid oil and wearing dyed beads next to this pine tree should help you remember that the atypical antipsychotics with the pine suffix can cause weight gain, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. So now let's finally talk about some side effects that apply to all of the atypical antipsychotics. An old man is sitting next to a fire roasting a hare while he eats a three musketeers bar. Musketeer bars are the recurring symbol for muscarinic three receptors. So this guy eating the three musketeers bar should make you think of anti-muscarinic or specifically blocking muscarinic three receptors. But the reality is atypical antipsychotics can also block muscarinic one and muscarinic two receptors. In fact, as we mentioned before, he's roasting a rabbit. You could call it a hare, actually. And since it's burning, we think of hot. So hot as a hare. And hot as a hare is our symbol for that phrase, hot as a hare, dry as a bone, and mad as a hatter, which is a mnemonic that many people use to remember the anticholinergic effects. So the whole idea here is to remember that atypical antipsychotics can cause antimuscarinic or anticholinergic effects. As he enjoys his Three Musketeers bar and waits for his hair to finish roasting, the old man is looking at a brochure for a retirement community called Elderly Paradise Services, or EPS, that he's thinking about moving to. Well, EPS stands for Elderly Paradise, or Elderly Paradise Services, but it also stands for Extra Pyramidal Symptoms, EPS. So this brochure the old man is holding should help you remember that atypical antipsychotics can produce extra pyramidal symptoms. It's worth noting that first generation or typical antipsychotics are actually more likely to produce these extra pyramidal symptoms, as well as the anti-muscarinic symptoms, more so than second generation or atypical antipsychotics. A woman can be seen pinching her grandma's cheeks and stretching them out while saying, what a cutie, as her grandma grimaces with discomfort. Not a respectful way to treat one's elderly family members. You may recall that someone saying cutie while stretching their cheeks represents QT prolongation. So this should help you remember that all atypical antipsychotics can cause QT prolongation. Now this evil villain Maleficent has been cast out of her old kingdom and she ended up here and can be seen lurking around up in the pine trees and zapping kids on the head. We'll introduce the poor kid in a minute. Well, Maleficent zapping someone on the head has been our recurring symbol for neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Is shocking someone's head for neuro, and maleficent stands for malignant. So neuro shocking maleficent represents neuroleptic malignant for neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And this is something that all atypical antipsychotics may cause. Now the kid that maleficent is zapping was up in the tree eating a piece of whole grain bread before she was attacked. When she started getting zapped, she fell off the branch that she was sitting on, but fortunately managed to grab onto the clothesline with one hand as she fell. As she hangs onto the clothesline, clutching her whole grain bread and getting zapped, she starts to have a seizure. Well, grains like this represent granulocytes, and getting crumbled up and falling low represents low granulocytes, or agranulocytosis. And the fact that this poor kid is shaking around like she's having a seizure represents seizures. Since this is all taking place on the clothesline, should help you remember that these ideas apply to clozapine specifically. So just remember that clozapine can cause agranulocytosis and seizures. And that concludes our video on atypical antipsychotics.